Hey everybody, welcome to the Rochester Press Box. Rick Spence filling in for Bill Puckle this week and bringing in uh, two new friends. First off, uh, one Mr. Uh, Kevin Eklumja. Good to see you, my friend. Good to be back. Good to be back. Good to have you. Uh, and then Paul, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I, I've missed you a couple of weeks. We've been out of town following uh, a high school boys baseball for a while. How you been? Been great. It's been great to be back here. Same as Kevin. Uh, so a lot to get into. One of the first things I wanted to get into this uh, show was the viewership for multiple sports since opening day for baseball viewership has been up for baseball especially coming off this last week with the yankees dodgers same thing for the stanley cup and the same thing we all know for the WNBA. so i'll start with you kevin your thoughts on the fact that the stanley cup ratings game one were pretty big uh from better than last year yeah i think it's i don't you know it might just be a building of uh I'm not sure because it's Edmonton. And yeah. Edmonton's not going to carry the United States. Mm. Yeah, they have Star Power and McDavid, but still, it's not the Rangers Kings, not it's not the Blackhawks, it's not major markets. Even Florida, I mean, it's Miami, okay, but not a hockey market, supposedly. But I don't know what it is. I mean, whether it's TNT and ESPN providing exposure on both, whether it's I don't know what's on tonight, is the NBA on TNT or is it the NHL? Ah, I was looking for the Lakers, but I'll watch that. I don't know what it is. It could be a combination of a lot of things. But as a hockey person, I get it. But I don't know. I I, I don't know. I mean, and is it year over year numbers are up? Well, like the, was there a everything was up during the pandemic with with things that played, and yep. then everybody wanted something to do, so they didn't watch their TV. But now maybe they're back into a more normal lifestyle. Down from two years ago, but up from last year, which is a, which is in a positive note, especially with all these TV contracts. This is really important to know where the ratings are. Is it the fact that there is, you know, no NFL? NBA seems to be going very quickly. NHL, their season might be over soon, depending on what's going on with uh, uh, with Edmonton. I mean, are you finding yourself watching different sports now more, Paul, this year? Well, for that game one, it was a standalone game of sorts because the NBA didn't play that night. And I don't think there, there were national nationally uh, broadcast baseball games on so it, it was it did kind of sit there on its own and that's one so, reason we waited seven days for the NHL to start the <laughs> yeah. finals because tv says we need a game here well it's interesting though I, the fact that i find that the nba and the nhl are having so much distance in between games it's almost as if they found a way to, to stack the schedule where we're not competing on the same well, they very day. much work together i mean i don't know if they did 20 years ago but over the past 10 5 whatever they worked together very well to say, all right, you know, we're going to play these days and, you know, and well, it, NHL will have these days. And on certain nights you can catch an NHL game and an NBA game and maybe catch a maybe WNBA game going forward. So it kind of pushes the NFL away. Have you found yourself watching more baseball? I know how much you love it. You you watch local kids play all the time. We'll talk about that later. But we're talking National League baseball. Well, I, Whenever I come home at night after watching the game, I usually have it on in the background. The one interesting thing, though, is with the speed of play, it's like now it'll be 9.15 at night and the game <laughs> games have ended, you know, the, the 7 o'clock games have ended, so you're accustomed to having them on in the background and say, wait, wait, what's going on here? And it's, it's the same with the NHL. Yeah. I mean, the two and a half hours, you're pretty much done with the game. It used to be, you know, you could count on three and sometimes more. Just because of the way they played the game back Is then. it the clock, though? I, I want to go back to the timing. Baseball has been looking to try to cut its game time down. It looks like it's working. No doubt, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the idea of a guy stepping out after every pitch to do 18 gyrations <laughs> with his batting gloves and sleeves and arms and every other piece of equipment. Oh, ball. Oh, I got to do it again. I mean, we how umpires and the league allowed that to get so out of control is beyond me. And it's just a simple fix, and it's worked. And it's interesting. It's crossed another sport, WNBA, the highest attendance in 26 years. I find myself, I don't watch a lot of WNBA. I've seen more games this year than I've seen in the last five years. Whether it's the Caitlin Clark's Angel Reese effect, it doesn't matter. I'm interested in watching these games. It's live TV. Yeah, there's no doubt with Caitlin Clark and, and Angel Reese bringing in the the rivalry that they had from from the NCAA tournament into into uh, into the WNBA is great. Congratulations though to the to the Olympic selection committee for not falling for all of it and and taking Caitlin Clark mm -hmm. uh, this summer with them. I mean they, they they started training two years ago for the for these games to to put her on would have been irresponsible and that's good to see it. But nonetheless. Those young kids are going to, they're, they're the future of the game, and I expect to see them in the Olympics in a few years. Right sports decision, maybe not the best marketing decision right now. She's one of the hottest players in sports. 
Absolutely. And I think, you know, obviously she has brought viewers to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. But once they get there, I think enough people are saying, and this is entertaining. They don't have to see the Caitlin Clark game. Yeah. They're whatever game they find. And it, I, and I think that's, that's big. That's the impact she's had. And it's working. Coming up in a matter of moments, the Buffalo Bills have their mini camps. But is it really necessary? And can a wrestler turn into a pro football player? We'll find out next. You're watching the Rochester Press Box. Just passing through life lessons from notable Rochesterians, people you may think you know. Don Elhart, Maggie Brooks, John Dady, and Stacey Pension, J Mack and Soccer Sam, Fred Costello, and Jake Zembeck, along with 21 more. How they all got from there to here. It's a new book by Bill Pucko, available for $12 postpaid only from rocksportsnow.com. Try it and thank you. Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. Kevin McClubja here. Paul Gotham is here. And we talk Buffalo Bills. Now, I guess my thing would be with the Buffalo Bills. I'll start with you, Paul. Your your thoughts on minicamp. Is it much to do about nothing? Yes. Are we basically sitting <laughs> yes. here watching these guys just walk around, run around, and just say, hey, guess who showed up? Guess who didn't show up? And we know why they didn't show up because they're in a contract dispute or they couldn't make it. I feel like minicamps are the way for the NFL to be on talk shows uh, in May and June. Uh, and, and people are going to make a lot about everybody who what doesn't. Happened, who didn't show who up. Who didn't show up. That's the biggest <laughs> news. Is. The, only, who didn't show the up. only thing that is of importance is if someone gets hurt, which are pretty rare in, in minicamp, but, or OT, you know, the organized team activity. I mean, it's it's fairly rare, but that's that's the news. I, people, when I, back in my previous life at the DNC, we'd go, everybody covered training camp. People I'd run into, you know, afterward would, oh, how'd they look today? They looked Awesome. <laughs> they weren't wearing pads. They were seven on seven, and everybody cheered when the offense completed. And the no pass. one got hurt, basically. Yeah. They were amazing catches. It was great timing and everything. Of course, they look great. They're playing against themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. If they don't look good, then we're really in trouble. Uh, yeah, that's that, that, that. Everybody looks great when they go to camp. Easy to make cuts then. Didn't you yeah. know for a while if you're not in shape I miss, now? I miss the days of, of Gump Worsley reporting to North Star's, <laughs> North Star's training camp in Canada wearing. Wearing shorts, a t-shirt, dress socks, dress shoes, smoking a cigarette with a cup of coffee in his hand, walking the two-mile run. Wait, you're gonna mention Gump and not Cesar Maniago? <laughs> Caesar was running. Those, those, those days are over. Uh, what's interesting about this is the Buffalo Bills take on a brand new project, a wrestler, uh, a, a championship wrestler in uh Gable Stevenson is trying to make the team. Your thoughts on the possibility of a wrestler making the transition to the NFL? I see it in some positions, but trying to make it on the defensive line? I don't know. I mean, an amazing athlete. I mean, wrestlers mm -hmm. might be the best pound per pound athlete. Um, if, if, if anybody's going to make a team that would be a wrestler at, at that position, but basically you're wrestling with someone. Right. Big, I mean, he's not height. He doesn't have, but he's, he's, he's certainly strong. Just quickness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the big things off the edge. You know, be your guy, and now all of a sudden, now you're in the quarterback. So maybe it works. I don't mind the project. I mean, you have enough roster spots that you can have one that's sort of transition. Would you agree? Practice team. At the at the very least, he's going to be on the practice squad, I would think, and and he's certainly going to provide some competition when they come to Fisher. And, and, and maybe why. it takes a year or two. So the practice squad thing makes sense. Yeah, I mean, give him some time. I mean, this is a totally different sport than when it comes to wrestling. But remember, you're competing with guys that have played this sport for years. somewhere. Maybe, but at any given time, it's, it's sort of like to go back to the sort of Caitlin Clark thing. These guys are professionals that have been working on their craft for years. You've come in with some wrestling of skills and ability. Don't get me wrong, but this is a totally different beast. And it's going to take some time. I would say probably a year, like you said, Paul, on the practice I think, squad. I think some of those skills, you know, it's, it's, it's not the same, but I think some of those skills translate, though, yeah. to when you're locking up with a guy to on the, on the line. And if you watch the drills and how the, the hands, you know, the motion and the movements with the hands and the, the technique that they have, I think some of those maybe translate well. Right. Well, and back to the whole Caitlin Clark thing. The, the interesting thing about Caitlin Clark is you look at when the college season ends and when the WNBA season begins, there's no rest, at least with 
with Stevenson, he does have a chance to kind of work up to things yeah, here a little yeah. bit. And he does. There is a progression, and, and it should help him a little bit. And fortunately, the Bills do not need his position <laughs> for the start <laughs> of the season going forward. Like it or not, coming up next, you're watching the Rochester Press Box. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road. Thank you, American architect Frank Lloyd Wright and this amazing getaway to Great Cliff. Hello again, Mike O'Brien, your getaway guy. I'll take you on the tour. Just look for the getaway guy right now on Facebook. Here's the Press Box Trivia Answer, brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. It's Like It or Not segment is being brought to you by Ralph Honda, where Honda is done right online or in their showroom. Build your new Honda, get financing, and a quote on your trade. For your next Honda, visit Ralph Honda. All right, uh, Paul, wanted to get your thoughts on the story of the week that started off on Monday. Danny Hurley says no to the Lakers to stay at UConn. Your thoughts? I like it on a, a couple different uh, platforms or a couple different steps here. But first off, he, he's going back. He's taking less money to return to UConn to, to try and, and win a third straight title, which would put him in, in pretty rare air there with uh, Coach Wooden from the UCLA era but here's the thing people were talking about how Danny Hurley was going to have to adjust to the NBA and mm -hmm. adjust his style and he was going to have to change but Palenka and Janie Buss Rob Palenka and Janie Buss were bringing him in and and I I wonder if there was a message being sent to to the to the Laker players it's been a revolving door there I mean Frank Vogel wins a title and then he's gone within a couple years Darvin Ham works as hard as anybody and couldn't stay. Yeah, and I wonder if they're they're looking at it and saying, you know what? This has got to change. Yeah. You you guys have got to meet the coach halfway here and, and make it work. Uh and so I like that Danny Hurley's going back and he's looking to win a third straight title. I'm not a UConn fan, but I like the fact that I, I like the way he coaches his team up and, and they run great stuff on the offensive end. I like the fact that that maybe the Lakers are trying to send a message and you know. Wouldn't Sam Cassell look good in that position? I, Sam Cassell is one of my underrated, I'm glad you brought him up, one of the underrated guys I think that will get an NBA job before uh, the time is out in the near future. But I, you know what's interesting about this is the fact that uh, this has become these sort of pools. You mentioned before that Hurley and the money, a lot of these guys are making money outside of just coaching with all of the endorsements they're getting. So it's helping college I mean, basketball as players. As players. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but for UConn, it's, it's enough for you to stick around, which I think is interesting. Uh, I want to get your thoughts, like it or not, on the new head coach, Mike Leone, coming to the Amherst. Very much the same old as Seth Appert. And this is I, it's clearly what the Sabres under Kevin Adams want. They want a development first, very much development first coach who can work with players. And like Seth, I mean, Seth was very much about the person. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, he coached hockey and he needed to, you know, but as much as he knew hockey, he also understood that the players were people and he got to know them. And that's Mike Leone's MO. It's the same thing. He's He cares about the person. And Seth talked about often about relationships he's had, you know, 20 years ago with players yeah. that he coached in college or wherever, and they're still close and they're still in contact. And that helped. That means a lot because the players, tend to, you know, the Amherst on this past team, you know, they they spoke very highly of Seth and just how he conducted business. Yeah. They knew where they stood. They knew what he wanted. I think it's the same thing with Mike Leone. It's it's all about development. You you brought a guy in from the USHL, mm -hmm. which, you know, he comes from a place that produced John Cooper. So coaching tree there is pretty good out of Green Bay. So You know what's interesting about this, too? And they, they, like, the, they like Seth so much, they kept him in the organization. So it's not like he walked out the door. Oh, no, absolutely. And he that, stayed with the Sabres. Very uh, good chance that's why he didn't go anywhere last year. Yeah. You know, people wanted to talk to him. And I think I think there was a, a lot, you know, a, a, a an idea within that there would be a spot for him, mm -hmm. probably as head coach. I mean, Lindy is 
you know, early 60s. He's not. You gonna, wanted him back, not, though. You, I, you, I, you, I, I like the idea coming. for right now. Yeah. He is the guy who can establish a winning culture again. People get it. He gets it. And he knows what Buffalo needs. And he knows what Buffalo wants. And he can convey that. But, again, he's in his mid-60s. He's not coaching until he's 80. But Buffalo loves him. Or and Yes. and Or even 70, I don't think. So, I think, you know, this opens the door for Seth to get bench experience in the NHL and step into that head coaching job. It should be interesting. Coming up next, Unfinished Business. You're watching the Rochester Press Box. The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. Come home to McArdle's. Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. Tariq Spence filling in for Bill Puckle this week. Uh, unfinished business, and Paul Gotham fires off first. Since you mentioned high school baseball, I'm going to talk about it right now. Congratulations goes out to Section 5 Baseball, which took five state quarterfinals from their Section 6 counterparts. Uh, second time in uh, Far West regional history that the uh, local squads have dominated to that uh, extent. Arkport, Canisarega, and Fairport made good on it with winning state titles last weekend. Fairport state title was due in part to the keen decision-making of second-year head coach Kieran Murphy. Uh, Weather delays and a couple of other factors pushed back their start time for the Friday night state semifinal. That meant they started a game around 10.30 Friday night, which finished after midnight, well after midnight. Fairport made good on it with a 3-2 win the next day, a win that will go down with Sam Roselli, the sophomore right fielder, etching his name into uh, Fairport sports history with his version of the catch. Jackson Rucker had a two-run triple. Nathan Vandevoort threw six shutout innings, and Kieran Murphy made the decision to help Fairport go the distance. Congratulations, Kieran, and Fairport baseball. So Sunday afternoon, if you happen to go to Innovative Field to watch the Rochester Red Wings, they're not going to be there. Instead, it's the Malmo Oat Milkers hosting the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders. You heard me. No, you probably didn't hear me. You said, what? <laughs> the Malmo Oat Milkers. That's right. A Swedish company bought, through Major League Baseball, the rights for every minor league baseball team to wear the Malmo Oat Milker jerseys one day this summer. It is the stupidest, most absurd <laughs> money grab I have ever heard of. Now, granted, there's no reverence to the uniform. I mean, they are the plates on Thursdays when they play at home. So there's no reverence to the Red Wing uniform. But the fact that Major League Baseball is making every minor league team become the Malmo <laughs> Oat Milkers for a day and the minor league teams get zero dollars is the stupidest thing I've heard of. But it shows you how important money is to the almighty Major League Baseball powers that be. Would you say the name of the team is going to be? The Malmo Oat Milkers. I hope that product flops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all this contract talk on who's going to be the next head coach of whatever team, that is interesting. But you know what quietly happened this past week? One Mr. Mike Tomlin got a three-year extension with the Pittsburgh Steelers. One of the most consistent coaches in the NFL got a contract extension and nobody's talking about it until I just mentioned it. Why? Well, I secretly somewhere down the line, we're hoping that Tomlin would end up with my New York football giants. Not that I don't like Dable, but I do going forward. But I was thinking of the consistency of the fact that he has been able to find ways to make his team competitive, knowing full well that that team does not have their number one quarterback. Now, maybe they do with Russell Wilson or perhaps Fields in the future. But one thing will remain the same. The Steeler organization will stay consistent because Mike Tomlin is consistent. He goes to work every single day every single week of the NFL and finds a way to take some team of his that has no quarterback abilities or no offense abilities to the playoffs or at least threaten to take a playoff team out of contention and put his team in. That's Mike Tomlin. I love the man as a coach. Not a lot of fanfare on now starting his 18th season in the NFL with the Steelers. 
And a lot of people will say he needs more wins, but he is consistent, and they are in it every year, regardless of talent. That's this week's Rochester's Press Box. First of all, I want to thank Paul. Appreciate your last minute, my friend. Oh, happy to be here. Thank you for asking. Kevin, it's always great, colorful, analytic uh, opinions. I love every bit of it. Yeah, just speak the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a short exit real quick. Wait, what's the name of that team again? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask him and don't ask him for his opinion on it. Go to Wegmans to find Alamo oat milk. <laughs> Good luck finding it on the shelf. That's this week's Rochester's Press Box. Bill Buckle will be back next week. Have a great weekend. <laughs> is, that, is that something you buy on the, in Wegmans? Where do you get that? <laughs>